Tails and the monkey and the turtle who started as friends. They both saw a floating banana plant on the water. They thought of splitting it so they could plant it. The monkey chose the upper part of the plant for he thought it was better. Meanwhile, the turtle got the bottom part with the roots, so he grew an abundant plant. Since the turtle couldn't climb the tree to get the fruits, he asked the monkey to get it for him. Instead, the monkey betrayed the turtle and ate every fruit. The turtle planned revenge to him, which ended the monkey's death. The friends of the monkey also planned a revenge, but they did not win over the turtle. The values in this story is to be good to others so they will do well to you too. This Filipino folktale talks about a beautiful girl who grew up being vain and spoiled. She was admiring her beauty by the river when the chief of crabs adored her beauty and spoke to her. She was shocked and shoved away the crab. In return, the chief scratched her face and cursed her to become a fish with many scales. In return, the chief scratched her face and cursed her to become a fish with many scales. The values in this story is not judging others by its physical looks. The carabao thought of a shell to be very slow. When the race began, the carabao went for a long distance. He shouted, shell, and then another shell answered. He went on and on and every time he shouts to find shell, another shell would answer. The carabao was determined to win the race so he kept running until he got exhausted and died. The values in this story is to be wise to not get fooled by others. Bakunawi Long ago, there were seven moons in the sky. Each of the moons embodies a lunar deity. One night, Bakunawa saw the beauty of the moons. Captivated by their beauty, she wanted to possess them so the Bakunawa rose from her domain and flew to the world of moons. And ordinarily proud of her feet, she slunk back to, to her watery domain. Unfortunately, she soon realized the moon inside her was melting away like a candle wax. She wants to take a moon that would last. Bakunawa rose into the sky the next night and swallowed another moon. But this one too melted away. Night after night, he took another moon from the sky. And each time, it melted away inside her. But Hala, the creator of all, saw what happened was furious. Rather than kill Bakunawa, he punished her to remain in the beast for all eternity and commanded her not to devour the last moon. They say Bakunawa obeys but Hala's order. Most of the time, every now and then, she tries. Yes, she tries to eat the last moon, and that is why it turns red. But people on earth raise a louder glimmer of clanging and clashing metal, screaming and wailing, all to startle him, spitting the moon out. Others take her gentler approach, playing music to put him into a deep sleep so that the moon will roll out of his mouth. Bakotnahawa is a serpent-like dragon in Philippine mythology. It is believed to be cause of eclipses, earthquakes, rains, and wind. The movements of the Bakunawa serve as a gymantic calendar system of ancient Filipinos and were part of the shamanistic rituals of the Babaylan. Story of Bathala In the beginning of time, there were three powerful gods who lived in the universe. Bathala was the caretaker of the earth. Uling Kaluluwa, or Pan Spirit, a huge serpent who lived in the clouds and the Lang Kaluluwa, wandering spirit, the winged lad who loves to travel. These three gods did not know each other. But Hala often dreamed of creating mortals but the empty earth stops him from doing so. Uliyang Kaluluwa who was equally lonely at, as but Hala, liked to visit places and the earth was his favorite. One day, the two gods met. Ulilang Kaluwa, seeing another god rivaling him, was not pleased. He challenged Bathala to fight to decide who would be the ruler of the universe. 
after three days and three nights, uli ang kaluluwa was slain by Bathala. Instead of giving him a pro- proper burial, Bathala burned the snake remains. A few years later, the third god, Galang Kaluluwa, wandered into Bathala's home. He welcomed the wicked god with much kindness and even invited him to live in his kingdom. They became true friends and were very happy for many years. Galang Kaluluwa became very ill. Before he died, he instructed Bathala to bury him in the spot where Ulilang Kaluluwa's body was burned. Bathala did exactly as he was told. Out of the grave of the two dead gods grew a tree with a big round knot, which is the coconut tree. Bathala took the knot and husked it. He noticed that the inner skin was hard. The knot itself reminded him of Galas Kaluluwa's head. It had two eyes, a flat nose and a round mouth. It lives so much like the wings of his dear new friend. But the trunk was hard and ugly like the body of his enemy, the snake Olilian Kaluluwa. Etymology Batala or Batala was apparently derived from Sanskrit Batara or Nobolai, which appeared as 16th century title Batara in the southern Philippines and Borneo. In Indonesian language, Batara means God. Its feminine counterpart was Batari. Duende Duende are goblins, have goblins, elves, or dwarves. These are creatures that play a certain amount of spaceships in Yuma, though from time to time they are also considered house guardians. They live in nice small hills that look like ant hills, big trees like Nara, and the bounded houses. They become scary if someone will destroy their home and punish the culprit with a myriad of ailments such as swelling or vomiting and ulcers. The phrase tabi tabi po is usually used to pay respect to their presence. Filipinos would leave food on the floor so that the vendor is saying the house would not be angry with them. The information conveyed in medical being in the Philippine tradition is that always use the phrase tabi tabi po when you go in the forest or when you see where they live to pay respect to their presence. Of Pina. There was a pretty little spoiled girl called Pina. Everything that Pina asked on her mother, Pina got. She was also a lazy child. One day, Pina's mother fell ill and there was no one to take care of Pina. She called her daughter to cook for her. Pina had never been asked to do anything in her life and she was quite prepared to refuse but she asked her mother what it is. She managed to find the rice, the water, the bowl, the sugar but she could not find the ladle anywhere because she's not searching everywhere in the kitchen. The mother of Pina shouted to her and her mother wished that Pina could grow a thousand eyes so she will be able to find the ladle. Pina hung out with her friends and her mother recovered quickly to find Pina but she failed to find Pina. One sunny day, while Pina's mother cleaning in the backyard, she saw strange spiny yellow fruit about as large as the head of a child with thousand black eyes that had sprung up from the ground. Pina's mother, who still loved her child more than anything in the world, decided to honor her memory by taking the seed of the strange yellow fruit and planting them. When after a while, there was more of the fruit. Pina's mother gave her harvest away to everyone she knew. Thus, Pina, in another form, became generous to others. The information conveyed in the story was pineapple is one of the favorite fruits of the Filipinos and they make a juice from pineapple to help strengthen the body. Legend of Dorian Old Tandang Doring is third in their area. She was rude to everyone she could talk to and see. This was the behavior of Ale after the death of her husband and child. She also lives at the foot of the mountain where she can be alone. Her yard was spacious even though she was the only one living there. Due to wildness of the old woman, the rumor spread especially to the young people that Tandang Doring was a witch. However, 
the old woman just got used to call him that. As a result, it became even more rude and elusive. One day, pungent odors spread throughout their community. Every day that smells intensifies. Until the residents could no longer bear it and research for the source. The smell brought them to the Dandang Doring's hut. They looked for the old woman, but they did not find her. Instead, they turned their attention to the smelly odor. They saw the tree with the fruit round, big and like a thorn in the flesh. Although the smell was pungent, they liked the taste, so they took the fruit. When someone asked an ali who was carrying fruit, he said, This is fruit of Tandang Dorin. This is where the name Dorian comes from. The information conveyed in the story is do not scare children from adult. A Dorian is a big fruit with a strong smell and a hard shell with sharp thorns. Its flavor is loved by some people. Especially in the Philippines, they love eating durian and the smell is so tasty. The Legend of Adlaw in Bulan In ancient time, it was pure light and there was no darkness. Because the Adlaw in Bulan were happy couple living. They had many children. Their child is stars that scatter so brightly in the sky. Sometimes couples get into heated argument that leads into divorce. The children chose who to go with because the mother was kind. All the stars came with her. Adlaw could do nothing but accept his fate. Since then, sun alone gives light and when it turned at night, the moon and the stars help each other to give light. We are normal to going out in the morning and being at home at night. In the morning, the sun is so bright. So hot and hard to see it. Well, the moon is so bright, especially with the stars. It's so beautiful to see it in the night. Filipino believe that when the stars go by, they make a wish in case their wishes come true.